The commentaries teach that Paul was not born again until he now here received the Holy Spirit. That is not true. Because Paul confessed the Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus. His Hebrew name is Saul, his Greek name is Paul. Same name. On the road to Damascus, he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. But on the road to Damascus, he didn't overflow with anything. He didn't lambano anything. So when Ananias comes in to minister to him, he calls him Brother Saul. Ananias would never have called him Brother Saul had he not been spiritually a brother to him. God must have told him this before he was ever sent by God to minister to Saul. God told Ananias to. That's why he says, verse 17, Brother Saul calls him a brother. He was born again of God's spirit before. But he says, he came, God sent him, Ananias, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with what? Spiritually was he filled. Had he decomied? Yes, but he had not what? Lambano. He hadn't manifest. He was born again, but he hadn't received anything in the manifestation yet. That's why the word filled in verse 17 is the word filled to overflowing. Same word. The same word. Palato. Filled to overflowing abundance. Something, isn't it? Keep your finger here and look in 1 Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12, verse 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and no man can say that Jesus is Lord. Lord where? In his life. But by Panuma Hagio, but by the overflowing, don't you see the, the essence of the truth? No man can say that he's really made Jesus Lord in his life unless he keeps it overflowing, but by Panuma Hagio. And the Apostle Paul, when Ananias came, he came and said to Paul or Saul, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be overflowing, filled with Panumahagion. He must have been, because in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, if you look at it, Paul says, by God's word, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than what? He must have been overflowing abundantly to do that. He just wasn't trinkling. Out of their belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Sometimes people will come along and they'll say, well, speaking in tongues went out with the apostles. Well, if it went out with the apostles, you wouldn't know it. Because the same verse of scripture that says tongues shall cease says knowledge has vanished away. 1 Corinthians 13. And if knowledge vanished away, how would people know tongue cease? By sheer logic. Right. But you see, they're trying to deprecate, trying to make the things of God like as if they're not things of God. God does not change. It reminds me of a wonderful letter I had this week in the office, I guess, where a fellow said, the thing that convinced him in the tape class of the greatness of God and his power was the statement in one of the words of God when we had read with him, and he had read it, that with God there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And he said that convinced him that the word had to be right. Because if there was a, a variableness with God or a shadow of turning with God, then you couldn't trust anything in God's word. And if you can't trust anything, you have nothing so it's either all God's word or none of it. It got through to him on that one little verse. Isn't it interesting how one person gets touched by one verse and somebody else gets touched by another verse? So here you have this tremendous truth. Look in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. And in verse 44, I'll read it in a moment. The engineers are telling me we've got two minutes till we go off a broadcast. 
So you people who have been listening to the broadcast tonight, I'm again sorry that we're right in the depth of the teaching ministry. But we only present this broadcast for an hour every Sunday night. And we can just do so much teaching in an hour, and we're a biblical research center. We're not a church service where the minister puts a cough drop in his mouth that lasts 20 minutes and we go home. We are a group of research men and women. We're people who are concerned about the accuracy and the integrity of God's word. And if we make it in an hour and a half, it's wonderful. If it takes two, it's wonderful. We're never in a hurry when it comes to working God's word. And I want to tell you people something. You can't learn God's word in 20 minutes. It even took God longer to give his son than that. So you might as well take some time to study God's word and get to the depth of it. Because in the greatness of that word is truth. And his word liveth and abideth forever. And I'm thankful for the time we've had to gather and the, the time you've had to listen. And you people, if you would like a copy of this that I'm teaching, if you'll write to the way this week, just write the way, New Knoxville, Ohio. Uh, when this is published, it will be published within the next three, four months or so. And when it's all finally worked down and published, I'll send you a copy free and post page. You can't do anything better than that. You, you don't have to pay for it. We just send it to you. So if you'll write to me, The Way, spelled T-H-E, capital W-A-Y, New Knoxville, Ohio, send you one when it's published. All right, thank you. God bless you. Have a good week all week. Don't the rest of you go home now. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost, the Panuma Hagion, fell on them which heard the word. The word fell is the word overflowed. Holy it overflowed. Well, if it overflowed, there was a manifestation. And the second verse after that tells you the manifestation in verse 46. For they heard them speak with what? Tongues. In verse 45, it's already there, if I might have just seen it a moment earlier. And they of the circumcision which believed were assembled as many as came with Peter because were astonished. As many as came with because that on the Gentiles also was poured out. Well, when you pour it out, you got a lot overflowing. That's why the word fell is that word overflowing. For they heard them speak with tongues. In chapter 11, Peter is called on the carpet in Jerusalem to give a testimony of why he went to Cornelius' house and did all those things. And he tells in verse 15, And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost, the Panuma Hagion, fell on them as on us at the beginning. And here the word fell is epipipto, to fall over, all the way over, 1115. Isn't that wonderful? In Acts chapter 13, and in verse 9, Then Saul, who also is called what? Paul, filled with Panuma Hagion, set his eyes on him, and the word filled is filled to overflowing. He was operating manifestations. That's why he was able to do what verses 10 and following declare. In verse 52, Two of the same chapter. And the disciples were filled with joy and with Panuma Hagion. This is the second usage now of these tremendous words. This one is the word plerao, P-L-E-R-A-O. This word filled. This is the second time it's used in the book of Acts or in the New Testament here. And the disciples were plerao, filled with joy and with panuma hagion. They were filled to capacity. They were just happy in the Lord. They weren't manifesting anything. Got it? Have you ever been that way? You've just been satisfied and just happy in the Lord? That's why I look at the words. They were filled with joy, and I told you joy is an inside job. Happiness depends upon the material surrounding. But joy is deeper. Joy is an inside. And that declaration 
He said they shook the dust off of their feet. And the disciples were just filled with joy and with Panuma Hagios. 